What's up, my worthy designers? Yes, I'm calling you a worthy designer because here we are embracing our creative journey no matter where you are. Today, we are going to be talking about how I turned this website into a high end looking website using Squarespace. Now, if you missed part one where I show how I designed a high end wedding videographer website using Squarespace, you can see that here. But I also want you to know that it is not the tool that makes this work. I believe that tools like Squarespace or WordPress or Show It are just that. They are tools. And it is really about the techniques that we use, the creativity that we use, that really makes these websites look great. So what I'm teaching you today are the techniques that I use. So no matter what platform you're using, I believe that you can transfer these to any platform. So it's just about knowing design principles and applying that to the platform of your choice. As always, if you are finding these helpful, please follow for more and let me know if you have any questions and that will help me create new videos for the channel. All right, let's get to it. Okay, just from the beginning, I want to show you where we started. So this was her website before I designed. And she designed this herself in Squarespace. But this would be like a typical Squarespace website. So I just kind of want to walk through the difference between what's regular way of building websites and how we can level them up so they look a little more high end and a little more professional. So as you can see from the very top, this is for a counseling service, a therapy service. Right away, some of the photos are very generic. And I know that the name of the company is River Counseling. So she kind of took that word river and used that in all of her stock photography. The problem is this makes the website look like it's an outdoorsy, like it doesn't communicate therapy. So there is some confusion happening and we don't want to confuse the reader or the visitor because what's going to happen is people are going to be confused and they're going to leave. They're going to come to the website and go, what is all this river stuff and outdoorsy stuff? Is this some kind of hiking place? We want to make that very, very crystal clear of what the experience is going to be like working with this person. So right away, that's a number one that I noticed. Second thing I noticed is that the colors. So she does like the blue color because that is part of her logo. I'm not changing the logo and I'm not changing the blue. So we are going to keep that. However, there is a strong blue color throughout this website. We don't have any other variations to kind of ease that eye flow through the website. So we have this really, really strong, bold blue, but we don't have any other colors as far as like some neutrals in there. So my tip here is to create a full color palette with several colors. And we always want to have some neutrals in there because the strong colors, yes, we love those, but they we want to use those not as the majority, but more as just highlights so that they can just guiding our eye but not overwhelming us also the structure of the website things seem to be just stacked as far as like a photo either full width or half width so we don't have any other variations of layout which doesn't give much variation for our viewers allowing them to keep their interest because if people get bored they tend to leave as well. So first things first, we are going to create a color palette for her that is going to set the tone for her entire website. How we do that is we're going to pull the blue from her logo and I'm doing this in Illustrator. I'm just taking the eyedropper tool. Then we're going to grab that hex code. Then we're going to come over to coolers.co and right in the middle color, this is going to be our main color palette. We're going to put that blue and we're going to lock this one. That just means we don't want this one to change. Now, if I hit the space bar, it's going to cycle through color palettes that go with that color, which is super great. And I'm just going to scroll through this until I find ones that I like. Now, since I've already done this process, I came up with two color palettes that I really liked. I ended up really liking this very light lavender color. Uh, I really liked this alabaster color and I did like this lighter blue color, um, but we're going to use kind of the neutrals in here as well. So when we came up with her color palette, we have kind of some nice variation here that we can use throughout her website. Another thing I like to add to add just a little more customization to my websites 
are some graphic elements. So either I'll pull from their logo or I will make patterns for them. But because this one had a wave already in her logo, I decided to pull that wave out, change it to the turquoise color. And we're going to add this throughout the website just to add some branding reinforcement, but also a little bit of graphic element to it, which just keeps some interest throughout. Also adding some script elements to the website. I am going to add a custom font, but I will create the graphic in Illustrator like her signature. This is done in the same font as her logo. And I will add this as a graphic in the website and it just makes it look a little more handmade and a little more custom. The next step is I'm going to open up my creative artboards. So this is where I get my creative layouts inspiration. I actually have these up on my website available to anyone who would like them. I have 60 creative artboards here and I'm going to look for one that is going to be the header and the header is super important, really, really important as far as wowing people when they come to the website. So I do know that I want to have one photo of the owner on it. So I'm going to look for a artboard that has a vertical photo so that I can use that as the header image. So this is the one that I end up really liking. And we're gonna pull this into Photoshop and I'm gonna create the layout in Photoshop just because I have a lot of photos that I'm gonna be using, backgrounds and textures. And so I like to use Photoshop for that. You're welcome to use Illustrator or any other mock-up uh, program that you wanna use. Okay, so this is my Photoshop mock-up. When I make a Photoshop file, really you just need to go file new, make sure it go over to web, and then I do web large, and that will hit the 1920 by 1080. And I just use this as a template and to export any graphics that I'm going to use for the Squarespace website. So obviously I'm not laying this out exactly, but this is my template. Some of the things I really like too about using Photoshop is I can add a little bit more extra flair to things. Whereas if I were to do this in Squarespace, maybe it would just be a photo. I can do frames in Squarespace, but they aren't going to be this tight around the photo. And I can do overlapping in Squarespace, but I want to have this cursive font that, that also matches her logo. So this graphic right here with her photo and the outline and her signature will become one graphic that I will export and use that to import into Squarespace. This photo is an actual photo of her office and where she meets with clients. So I thought that was appropriate so people could get an idea of what it's like to work with her. Now, this is what it looks like inside Squarespace. So once I got everything created in Squarespace, I did feel like it needed a texture in the background and not just a solid color. So we added this very, very light background texture. It just gives it a little bit more interest than just a solid color. Here's that graphic that I exported out of Photoshop and her photo of her office. As you can see, some of the things have adjusted because it's being in Squarespace. It's not exactly like my Photoshop file, but that was just inspiration for pulling it in. Now, once we got everything put in, I did add a custom font. So I found this fabulous custom font on Creative Market. If you want to see my how to add custom fonts video, I will link that here so you can go see how I do that. But really, I added it to all the main headings. And this font was so fun because it has these really interesting letterings that overlap each other automatically without me doing anything. So see how the R goes underneath the I and the I gets smaller. The L goes under the O and the O gets smaller. Uh, we have a slanted O next to the U, those kind of things. And if I go down further, you can see this R under her replenish, renew, revive just really looks super custom because of that, that fancy R that's in there. So for the following layout, I did go back to my creative artboards to find some more inspiration also using images that looked kind of like her office. So these were cozy couches and cozy like blankets, things that looked like you would be sitting in her office talking to her because she is a therapist. So this gives a really cozy feeling. You can see like the coffee mug, a small about section. If we go over to my artboard, 
comes from this section right here. And just a small intro to her services. This design layout I also have in my artboards. That one looks like this on my artboards right there. And then of course a testimonial section with a photo of her office again. And then the footer. The about page section, this top design is also on my artboards. I'll show you that one. Uh, that one is right here. You can kind of see the similarities there. Then her services page, again, I did that same split layout from the homepage, but just switched it up a little bit and put a solid color on the left and filled the background with a full background image, again, with her image of her uh, office. And then this is just a stock, stock photo. It looks like it could be her talking to a client. It is not her but I found a just a really light and airy photo that might look like the same situation. Then we go through her approach, her services. And again, we wanna reiterate what it's like to work with her. So showing photos of her is super important, showing that she also works in person and virtual and illustrating that through photos is fantastic. So she got actual photo shoot taken with a professional photographer. I highly recommend this. Make sure they take photos of you in action doing your work so that we can put those throughout your website, whether it's on a laptop, uh, whether it's sitting on a couch or at a desk, or whether you're on the phone. Using in action photos and not just smiling ones is really great to get an idea of what it's like to work with you in real life. If you would like the creative art boards for inspirational layouts, that's over on my website, SharonMarta.com. And let me know if you have any other questions about web design and graphic design because I want to help you on your creative journey. All right, that's it. Bye.